day of life and begin to thank Him. Father, we thank You. We thank You, Lord. Thank You for Your presence. Do a new thing in our lives. We exalt You because You are faithful. Why don't You begin to worship Him? Why don't You begin to worship Him? Begin to worship Him. Holy Spirit, we welcome You. Holy Spirit, we welcome You. Holy Spirit, we welcome You. Thank You, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we welcome You to a new thing in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Well, you're welcome to to a service. We thank God for your lives. We trust that God is blessing you wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Uh, I am so confident that God is going to do a new thing in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Are you ready for the word? Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word? All right. Uh, Turn with me, please, in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah chapter 58, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 14, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 14, I read, it says, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it and we are blessed by the reading of God's word I'm continuing and concluding the message I started last week titled delight yourself in the Lord delight yourself in the Lord and this is part two delight yourself in in the Lord and this is part two every human being one way or the other has a delight in something your delight shows where your heart is Jesus said where your treasure is there will your heart be also so that means your delight shows where your heart is. If your heart is in something, your delight will be in it. If your heart is in something, your delight will be in that thing. So the scripture we read in the book of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 14, the Bible says that then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And God says, when you delight yourself in me, he said, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth. I will cause you to ride where? On the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So that means every time we delight ourselves in the Lord, God causes us to ride on the high hills of the earth. And I see someone this year, your story is changing. God is going to cause you to ride on the high places of the earth this year in the mighty name of Jesus. What does it mean to delight yourself in the Lord? Number one, to delight yourself in the Lord is to please God greatly. To delight yourself in the Lord is to please God greatly. Number two, to delight yourself in the Lord is to take great pleasure in the things of God and the house of God. To delight yourself in the Lord, number two, is to is to take great pleasure in the things of God and in the house of God. So let's quickly go back and look at uh, the foundational text we read and read it in context from verse 11 Isaiah chapter 58 from verse 11 it says the Lord will guide you continually he will guide you continually and 
satisfy your soul in drought oh my god that's a blessing that means even in farming god will satisfy your soul and strengthen your bones it says you shall be like a well watered garden and god says when you are like a well watered garden he said and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail those from among you shall build the old waste places that means god is going to put a grace an unusual grace upon you to build grace to build grace to build places that have been destroyed grace to build old waste places god says that you shall rise you shall raise up the foundations of many generations somebody say amen to that and not only that you shall be called the repairer of the breach my god this uh, this is an unusual anointing and i pray that this anointing is coming upon you as you delight yourself in the lord verse 58 he says if you turn away your foot from the sabbath from doing sorry verse 13 isaiah chapter 58 verse 13 it says if you turn your foot from the sabbath from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the sabbath a delight the holy day of the lord honorable then look at what god says you do it says then you shall delight yourself in the lord and i the lord i will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of jacob your father for the mouth of the lord has spoken it so it's time to delight yourself in the lord psalm 37 verse 3 to 5 the bible says that trust in the lord with all your heart trust in the lord and do good dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness glory verse 3 verse 4 says delight yourself also in the lord see delight yourself also in the lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart many are looking for the desires of their heart but the secret in gaining access to the desires of your heart is trusting in the lord and delighting yourself in him delight yourself also in the lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart the desires of your heart what are the desires of your heart a good marriage delight yourself in the lord and god will give you that good marriage good children a good house a good job a good income delight yourself in the lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart verse 5 he says commit your way to the lord trust also in him and he will bring it to pass hallelujah quickly let's go and look at five things every christian must diligently delight in without compromise five things every christian must diligently delight in without compromise number one every christian must delight diligently in praying always praying always the Bible says pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Jesus said to his disciples in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. He said men ought to always pray. Men always ought to pray and not lose heart. So we have to learn to pray without ceasing. Diligently. Be praying on a daily basis. Thank God for that testimony that came through this morning of an answer to prayers god always answers our prayers number two thing that every christian must diligently delight in without compromise is to delight diligently in fasting in fasting paul said in fastings often jesus said when you fast so that means fasting is a necessity for the growth of every christian jesus said when you fast 
Jesus said in Matthew chapter 17 verse 21, he said, this kind, this kind does not come out except through or except by prayer and fasting. So fasting is necessary. Are you following me? This kind, there are some kinds that doesn't come out except through prayer and fasting. So you must diligently delight in fastings often. Fastings often. Glory be to God. Number three, delight diligently in soul winning. Delight diligently in soul winning. Proverbs chapter 11, the Bible says that he that winneth soul is wise. He that winneth soul is wise. And they that turn many to God will be like the stars forever. He that winneth soul is wise. God wants you to be a soul winner. Listen, Jesus died for you so that you can bring someone to Christ. Number four, we must delight ourselves diligently in holy living. In living a holy life. You must delight diligently in living a holy life. The Bible says that without holiness, no man can see God. If you want to see God, you must live holy. You must live holy. Now, for your information, God sees everything and everywhere you are. He even sees your thoughts, your mind, what's in your heart. So holiness is important. Jesus said, if you look at a woman lustfully, you have committed adultery already. So it's important to come against the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Live a holy life. Number five, every Christian must diligently delight in, in, in the things of God without compromise in this number five. Delight diligently in paying your tithes and your offerings without fail. Delight diligently in paying your tithes and your offerings without fail this is important god says in malachi 3 10 he said bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house then when you do that he said prove me here within this and i'll open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to contain it that is where god wants to bring you to Listen, tithing is not doing God a favor or doing the church a favor. Now, I know we have thousands upon thousands watching on, on various platforms across the world. But listen, your tithe doesn't come to this church. If you are not a member of this church, your tithe goes to your church. It goes to your local assembly. It goes to the church where you are fed on a Sunday after Sunday. Are you following what I'm saying? Coming here is just a top up. So your tithe doesn't come to this church. Your tithe goes to your church. It goes to where you are fed by a local resident pastor. Are you following me? Your tithe doesn't go to a, 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 a prophet, an internet prophet somewhere. Your tithe goes to your local assembly. So be a Christian who delight in paying your tithes and your offerings without fail. Without fail. Be consistent. Don't be wishy-washy. Today you give, tomorrow you don't give. How would you feel if God blesses you today and tomorrow he decides not to bless you? So give on a diligent basis. Quick question we want to ask is what does God delight in? If God wants us to delight in him, that means God also delights in some things. So what does God delight in? Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 24. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 24. The Bible says that, But let him who glories, glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness, in the earth for in these i delight in says the lord so that means god also delights in certain things what are the things he delights in number one loving kindness god delights in exercising loving kindness 
Number two, God delights in judgment. And number three, God delights in righteousness here on the earth. Are you following me? So when God delights in these things, we must also delight in this thing. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll place you high above all the hills of the earth. I don't know about you, but that's my position. That's where I am going. That's where I am going with my family. That is where I'm going with this commission. That is where I'm going with this ministry. Every genuine member of this church is going to be lifted up high above in the mighty name of Jesus. Quickly, as we get ready to close, five, let's look at five unprecedented testimonies that follows those who delight in the Lord. Five unprecedented testimonies that follows those who delight in the Lord. Number one, goodness and mercies follow you daily. Psalm 23 verse 6, goodness and mercy follows you when, how? Daily. David puts it this way, says, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Somebody ought to shout a living amen right there. Amen. All the days, not some of the days, all the days of my life. And because of his goodness and mercies, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Somebody say a good amen. amen. If you are not sure what is following you, just look behind you today. If you look behind you, you'll see the goodness of the Lord following you. You'll see the mercies of the Lord following you. That's why the Bible says that it is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. You are where you are today because of the mercies of the Lord. So never take the mercies of God for granted. Glory be to God. Number two. Number two. Um... Uh, unprecedented testimonies that follow those who delight in the Lord is you shall lay up gold as dust. Oh my God. You shall lay up gold as dust. Now I'm teaching you practical steps of those who delight in the Lord and what follows them and the testimonies that follows them. These are examples of people in the Bible that have walked the path that you and I can also walk the path. David, for instance, was a young shepherd boy and within 40 years, he became the wealthiest man in the whole of Israel. From a poor, broke boy on the wilderness, but after he delight, what became, became a foundation in the things of God, God changed his destiny. God can change your destiny in a twinkling of an eye. I'm telling you, God can change your destiny in a twinkling of an eye. The children of Israel were in bondage. They were in captivity for 430 years. But just one day, it took one day to change their fortune. Just in one day, they became the most wealthiest people on the earth. So listen, delighting yourself in the Lord is not a waste of time. Let your delight be in the things of God, and you shall lay up gold as dust. Job chapter 22 from verse 21 to 26. It says, Now acquaint yourself with him, with who? With the Lord, and be at peace. Thereby good will come to you. Receive, please, instruction from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. You will remove iniquity far from your tents. Then you will lay up gold in the dust and the gold of offer among the stones of the brook. Say amen to that. It says then you will lay up gold as dust. Do you know what that means? That means you will work in so much wealth that your wealth will become like dust. It will become uncountable. You can block dust. Dust can have access to any room in this world. Dust, you know, you clean a place right now, the next thing you go and touch it, you, you see dust. You can't control dust. That is the level of wealth you are coming into. Just delight yourself in the Lord. And you are going to lay up gold as dust. 
The Bible says that in the days of Solomon, gold, he laid out gold as dust. Gold became so common. I prophesy over somebody in your generation, wealth will become common. I said in your generation, wealth will become common. Let me hear a living amen. I say, let me hear a living amen. amen. In your generation and generations after you, wealth and prosperity and gold will become common. It will be like dust in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 25, it says, Yes, the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. Look at what happens when you delight yourself in the Lord. Verse 26, it says, For then you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. Glory be to God. Number three, unprecedented testimonies that follows those who delight in the Lord is nothing good is withheld from them. Number three, nothing good is withheld from them. Numbers chapter 14 from verse 7 to 9. Numbers chapter 14 from verse 7 to 9. It says, And they spoke to all, all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. Say amen to that. God is bringing someone into an exceedingly good land this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the land is an exceedingly good land, but look at how we are going to take possession of the land. Verse 8, it says, If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. So you see the key? If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land. So that means when you delight in the Lord, he also delights in you. And when he delights in you, he brings you into the land, that exceedingly good land that flows with milk and honey. From today, you will not know luck in Jesus' name. Death will not, de death, death, you will not know death any longer. Amen. That testimony of death being wiped away supernaturally. Any debt you have owned is being cancelled now in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 9, it says, only do not rebel against the Lord. This is where many miss it. They rebel against God and don't delight in him and as a result of that he takes away every good thing away from them he withhold the good from them he says do not rebel against the lord nor fear the people of the land for they are our bread their protection has departed from them and the lord is with us do not fear glory be to god so it's a new season. It's our season where God will not withhold anything good from us. Amen. Number four, unprecedented testimonies that follows those who delight themselves in the Lord is you gain uncommon access to treasures of darkness and riches in secret places. You gain uncommon access to treasures of darkness and riches in secret places. Isaiah chapter 45 from verse 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 45 from verse 1 to 3. You now you know the story. This is an unsaved king that God used to, to demonstrate his glory through. If God did it through an unsaved king, then you who is saved, you are worth more than what he did through Cyrus. Glory be to God. So the Bible says in verse 1, it says, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him and lose the armor of kings. Glory be to God to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. Any gate that has been shut against you from today, it is permanently declared open. Verse 2, God says that I will go before you and make every crooked path straight. 
I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. My God, that means God will begin to fight your battles for you this year in the name of Jesus. Verse 3, key verse. God says, I will give you the treasures of darkness. Say amen to that. You know, there are treasures in darkness that many Christians don't have an idea about. In this lockdown, there are millions and billions flowing, floating into bank accounts. I call them treasures in darkness. They, they move from one account to the other at midnight. And you will experience that also in the name of Jesus. God says, I will give you. If you delight yourself in me, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord who call you by name, I am the God of Israel. That you may know I am the God of Jacob. You may know that I have called you by name. Glory be to God. Number five, the last but not the least, is those who delight themselves in the Lord walk in unprecedented testimonies. Testimonies that God is going to give you this year, this week, this month is going to shock many around you. Number five is that you will inherit houses and large cities you did not build. Just delight yourself in the Lord. Can you see some of the blessings that follows those who delight themselves in the Lord? Just delight yourself in the Lord and you begin to see the manifestations of his goodness. Number five, you will inherit houses and large cities you did not build. One man of God, a great man of God, Pastor E. Adeboe, the general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, he said where he started... Um, where he became the, the general overseer of the redeemed church, he prayed for God to give him a house because he was living in a, a small boy's quarter, struggling with his, his wife and children. And he prayed and prayed and prayed for God to give him a, a bigger house. And he felt as if nothing was happening. And he felt as if God was not answering. And he said one day he went to dedicate somebody's uh, a building and they put him in a, in a hall. And in that hall is just one of the many halls in the house. The, the place was so beautiful. He was looking at it and said, wow. So uh, uh, as he prayed and prayed and, and, and he said, uh, he didn't get a response. He asked God, but God, why are you not giving me a simple house that I'm asking you? And God said, the reason why I'm not giving you a house is because I want to give you a city. I want to build you a city. And today, to the glory of God, he has one of the largest church auditoriums across the world. A church auditorium that is three kilometers by three kilometers. And that is just, that is just, he said, we are not, they have not even finished yet. Are you following what I'm saying? So, listen, God, when you delight yourself in the Lord, you will, he will cause you to inherit houses and large cities you did not build. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10 to 12. It says, so it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to you and your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build. Someone ought to shout a living amen. amen. God says, I am bringing you into large yes. and beautiful cities Glory. which you did not build. Your money did not build, but I will give them to you. Why? Because you delight yourself in me. Verse 11, God says, Houses full of all good things. Hey, that means somebody is shopping from Dubai right now and packaging your house for you. 
is putting all the nicest chandeliers. Somebody is shopping from Singapore and putting the nicest mirrors in your house. Somebody is shopping from China and putting the nicest swimming pools in your house. They think they are building it for themselves, but very soon God will turn it to you. God says, house is full of all good things. Not some good things, all good things which you did not feel, hewn out wells which you did not dig, vine yards and olive trees which you did not plant. But when you are eating and you are full, then beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Now, this is what God said, that after I've done all of these things for you, just beware. Don't forget. Don't become ungrateful. Because rather unfortunately, many people have amnesia when it comes to the things of God. The moment God blesses them, they forget. God gives you a little blessing and you think you have arrived. My friend, you have not arrived. Just humble yourself and allow God to give you great and mighty things. If God gives you a house today and you backslide, look, he said there are cities waiting for you. There are large cities waiting. Why are you backsliding in one two by four house? Why are you backsliding in a small car he's blessed you with? It could be a land road, a range rover, a land rover. It's a small car compared to what God can give you. God said he wants to cause you to fly in the high places of the earth. That means when he blesses you with a bicycle and you are faithful, he'll move you to a motorbike. If you still remain faithful, he'll move you to a car, one car, two cars, 10 cars, 50 cars. You say, well, how is that going to happen? Well, he gives them to you so you can also give some to some others. In our few years of being in ministry, I've given uncountable cars uncountable cars that I cannot count many cars I have bought new cars brand new cars for my pastors are you following what I'm saying if God can trust you he will bless you when he when you are faithful on the level of cars then he'll move you to jets and private jets are you following what I'm saying now don't be where you are and give up on God don't backslide where you are there are many more blessings coming for you. So in the name of Jesus, I decree that you will not miss out on God. God's hand will be upon you. You will ride on the high places of the earth in the name of Jesus. I come against every spirit of struggle. Anything that is causing you to struggle from today, they are destroyed from today they are destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus only if you can delight yourself in the Lord then he will give you then he will give you he will give you he will give you there are so many things in God that he wants to channel to you just humble yourself delight yourself in the Lord stop delighting in things that are not of God let your delights be in God delight in fasting delight in praying delight in giving delight in soul winning and see if God will not change your level like I said before David was a poor broke boy looking after his father's sheep on the wilderness but yet within 40 years after God anointed him within 40 years of his calling he became the wealthiest man in the whole of his country God can turn your story around he can change it around God doesn't need time to turn your story around God is just waiting on your heart where is your heart Elisha said tomorrow I'll A blessing is coming your way. Tomorrow about this time, 
favor is coming your way. Tomorrow about this time, breakthroughs are coming your way. You will not miss out on God any longer. Testimonies will begin to chase you in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, I decree over you an unusual favor and unusual dimensions of favor. Listen, I have never lacked any good thing because my delight is in the Lord. My delight is in the Lord. Before I pray, God answers because God knows my heart. God knows my heart that my delight is in him. So this morning, wherever you are, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are, before we close this service, I want to lead you to Christ. You can't delight yourself in the Lord if you don't give yourself to Christ. Remember, in part one, we said this they did, the Corinthian church, this they did, not as we hoped, but they first gave themselves to God. You must first give yourself to God and then the rest will follow. So wherever you are, I want to pray with you. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. From today, I have decided to follow you. No turning back in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your sons and your daughters who have given their lives to you today. I ask, of oh God, that they will become great and mighty in your kingdom. I prophesy over them that none will fall back, that they will be diligent. They will follow you from now till Jesus comes back. We give you praise. We exalt you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen, if you gave your life to Christ, there's a, some special gift we would like to send to you. Go to our website, solutionchapel.org. Go and fill in a form, and there are some special gifts I would like to send to you. We want to help you to grow. We want you to become a strong believer, to learn how to delight yourself in the Lord. So you can become a great man, a great woman in your family. Your destiny will not go down. God will exalt you. God will do great and mighty things in your life. But you have to learn how to delight yourself in the Lord. And when you do that, the rest will follow. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added unto you. Your responsibility is to seek first the kingdom. And God's responsibility is to add all the other things unto you. Amen. So go on our website, uh, fill in that form, and we'll write back to you. We'll help you to grow. We'll pray with you. And we believe God to do great and mighty things in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that Christ in you is the hope of glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord give you peace on every side. May he cause you to be the head and not the tail. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance. Knowing that you are a solution to the nations. We love you. God bless you. Have a glorious day.